We're looking for the old Linger pit. All right, Clardle, and it got the nickname of Linger. Linger and die, actually, because it kept on limping on to the end. And that's the Taylor's, Taylor Grove mine. I get mixed up, because I have a customer at Taylor Burn. That was the lead mine. And this, the set for the Linger pit was just along the road here. And I'm thinking that's the heap for the actual drift. And I'm looking for it to try and match up Simon's photographs, really. The Taylor Grove was a lead mine. I don't think it was that successful. But it's still got quite a prominent heap along the Hexham Road. This is the end of the Holly's Road. I'd have to check on the map to make sure. Galloping rain or fine Glittering, clattering, cold old cavalry Galloping down to mine This is the 1865 First Ordnance Survey Sheet. Uh, that is where the modern day Clargill was. You can see it's the site of a lead mine here. Uh, notice these two shafts as well. I think they're down to the coal. And if we look there, Catstones, Cat's Clough, and Clargill Burn, there's a, a newspaper advertisement and it says that the, the pit was in Clargill Burn at the time. There was a level out towards it. Um, Cat's Clough is very interesting because they used to make out of the, because um, it was anthracite, it wasn't brilliant for going on open fires. They mixed it with clay and made what's called cats. And I'm wondering if Cat's Clough, if that's where they got the clay and made the cats. So the, the mine is different in 1865. It just goes, shows us a straight road, a lime kiln, and a road up to the pit there. Uh, obviously, it's not very big at this period. And this is the Taylor Taylor Grove lead mine. That's 1865. We've moved up to 1898. And you see the pit is now well established. I meant to mention also that this old limestone quarry is on the 1865 map, which I think is in the little limestone. But there's a little coal stave by the side of the road and the tramway going up into the level. Uh, and there's already an air shaft for the, the mine there. You see the Taylor's Grove mine disused at this particular time. You see there's very little infrastructure. The only building it's showing is down near the stairs at the bottom there, isn't it? Uh, there's no infrastructure up at the level. The other levels, as we're going to look at, seem to come this direction. Um, and the fire, what I think is a Firestone level is, is up here. This is a British Geological Survey sheet from 1833. Um, you find that the older ones are quite darker coloured. We're at Clargill. We are, there's Clargill Hall there. There's the crossroads at Ale. So this blue bit is the, the Great Limestone. That is the Little Limestone and that is the Firestone Sill there. So the coal is going to lie round about here. It doesn't show coal on this side of the burn. You see on the other side, on the ale side it shows us, but not on this side. But it shows us where the Firestone coal will come round. The Firestone coal is on top of the actual Firestone sill itself. Uh, but this shows us quite clearly some of the faults. Now this is the 1975 version. You can see the two faults that it shows on the other map there. And it shows clearly the ale burn lead vein there and zinc, lead and zinc. Now we can see the crop of the uh, Firestone coal here up near Leipzig, and that's where uh, the shepherds worked it. And we're coming back onto this side, it's hard to see the Blagel Road, but it's along the crop edge of the little limestone. And that again is the top of the Firestone, but it doesn't show where the fault is. This is the 1833 uh, Geological Survey of Alston. Again, it doesn't show where the Taylor's Grove mine was. It uh, shows us some of the other veins going through Mount Hooley there and shows us quite clearly the coal outcrops there as well. And this is the 1975 version. There's the Great Limestone. The Firestone Sill coming around into Mount Hooley. Uh, and it does show the little limestone coal outcrop near, near the road. But again, there's nothing conclusive to tell us what we want to see about Clargill. It does, though, give us a, a section We've got the little limestone coals there. Can you see there's two coals within the little limestone? That's a great limestone at the bottom. Uh, and either one or the, of the other of the two coals have worked. It doesn't show us the uh, firestone coal at all. 
but that's where it lies there. You've got the Firestone Sill, Sandstone, and the Crag Limestone above it. But it shows us the coal cloth coal, or the the fell top coal, as it's sometimes known. Uh, the Firestone coal is also known as the Oakwood coal in the, uh, in the when it gets to the non-anthracite measures. Okay, so this is a Coal Authority's interactive viewer. We'll try and explain um, a little bit about the area on here. Although it doesn't show everything, these are just plans that, that are deposited. So a lot of the plans around, around Mount Hooley and the other side of Blagle, it, it doesn't show them. So this is Mount Hooley Plantation. Um, we've had a walk along here today. That's this area of outcrop workings. And this is the old Clargill or the Linger and Dye Pit. Now, if you click on these, it gives you the name of the drift, but it's not 100% accurate. So that's saying that's a Clargill Alston Goodfellow Drift. And the Goodfellow Drift was another name for um, Linger and Dye <laughs> or the old Clargill Colliery. Worked certainly from 1901 by Benson's. The new Clargill, uh, originally taken over by Wrights and then by um, Bunt, Neville and Patch, is down here. That's that's. Uh, and these are their workings. Further along, we've got the old ale workings here, because at one time, ale and Clargill were, acted as each other's air roads, believe it or not, and there was a way into it by the side of the road here. And then that then became the ale drifts in Northumberland. Here we've got the ale burn, and that's the present drift they're working now. This, this old place here is the old ale white lees from the 1930s so we can't get a great deal of information off there we can put on the uh, working dates and it doesn't always show the working dates sadly so we're in the old linger pit here what date does that give us that gives us 1926 oh there's 1933 1935 and again, that doesn't give us anything. So those in the 1930s are when they were more or less finishing at Benson's before Wrights took it on. But I'm sure I've seen one 1907. There we are, 1907 there. These are the areas where Clargill finished off. They've got 1999. It was about 2001 with the foot and mouth or two, 2000 with the foot and mouth. That's when it kind of stopped. That's where they were at that particular time there. So these are other drifts that we're interested in. That's the main Clargill intake. I'm sure it is yet. Main Clargill intake. That's at the top of the road that's just recently been demolished. Um, that gives the name of, of North East. Uh, and that just says Clargill. And if we move round the hill to uh, the other side of Mount Hooley, this is known as Blagle Pit, believe it or not. From 1906, if we click on there, can you see it's got a date 1906, and that was the Alston and then Force Lime Company. It doesn't say anything particularly when it shows the mine entries. Uh, I know somebody that's been in those workings, and these are all the different Blagel colliery workings here, uh, because Blagel has been worked <laughs> over different periods of time. That was the last working period, around about 1992. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because the Taylor's Grove vein is actually a fault with a, a 30 foot down throw to the south so it throws down on this side and there's three different levels into it so as I'm looking for the Clargill colliery level I could also be looking um, at one of the lead levels now there was three levels we know where the main level was below the Great Limestone uh, it says also there's one above the Little Limestone and one below the Firestone sill so perhaps the one that I'm looking at that is in the middle the two coal shafts perhaps that is also one of the um one of the taylor grove levels i'm not saying it is perhaps it is perhaps it isn't and maybe those shafts are also to do with vein workings i've taken this information and that section there out of uh, raymond fairburn's book and also more and he says of the um of the taylor grove which worth <laughs> talking about really um it is little it's not much of a prospect to be admired in 1821, it had been tried in all the strata from the Great Limestone up to the High Slate Sill, and it raised very little ore. The only level of any importance is that below the Great Limestone, which is 
what's on the video. Uh, the others were only trials. But by 1855, the Moor Master was informed that they intended um, to mine Barites. In 1866, there was a problem with ventilation and a new shaft was needed, but by the 10th of March 1868, a notice of closure had been issued against the mine. Soon after this, it was noted that Mr. John Alderson Brown, the lessee, had not paid any duty. Uh, the the Moor Master visited the mine, he said, I have visited Taylor's Grove, and with the exception of a few rails, there is nothing in the place. What there may be inside, I had no means of determining, as the mouth of the level is closed. All the washing apparatus was removed under a, an execution from the county court and sold to defray Phillipson's claims and expenses. So we could get mixed up up there between the uh, the workings from Taylor Grove and also the Clargle workings. So we've got it on Google Earth and LiDAR. You've got to love LiDAR. This is the uh, where Taylor's Grove mine is. Let's open up LiDAR. Now there we see Taylor Grove. There's the road. Now this is where the set for Clargo Colliery was, the coal stave. And we see the tramway running up to the main pit heap here. So the Taylor Grove mine looks through Ray Fairburn. That the vein seems to come this way. So the drifts I've found that we're going to go through on the video say so there's the main surface that's the old drift going in there you see it going around the corner now this is one of the drifts that I'm wondering if the photograph is uh, the lower of the drifts and this big hole behind it is actually where it's all fallen in as we go further up the fell you see three distinct shafts here but there's this level in the middle which is a bit of a, a puzzle why that would be in the middle that's what made me wonder, is that anything to do with the uh, with the lead mine? The Firestone level, or what I'm taking to be the Firestone level, which I think is our photograph with the little tubs on, is up here. So all this depends then where the actual vein comes in, because the Taylor Grove vein is going to be the fault that terminates the workings, isn't it? It's a 30-foot down throw. Now, I've altered the scale and we've come further across. Remember, the fault is a 30 foot down throw, and this then are the other coal workings that uh, I won't walk round today. You see the difference in elevation down the fell. That is the little limestone quarry, and down here is the other quarry next to the, uh, the linger quarry. And there's the road that goes up and serves these little outcrop coal drifts. And as I said, there was another little track down there as well. These also got some coal drifts on them. So that's the area on LiDAR. And if we really zoom out, we see the whole area. Area. There's the uh, linger pit there. The line of what I think are the drifts there. And then if we go all the way across, we find the last worked Clargo pit here, the colliery there. And there is history of workings going all the way back, way before 17... 1790s it was well established and it talks about driving a level into Clargill Clough to drain it. So that's our overview on LiDAR. See this is the bottom drift underneath the fall and it does this does also look like it could be the one with all the men on that stood up the sides but there's a little bit of a feature up there that you can see well with the naked eye but it doesn't show up very well on the camera you know even if I sort of ah, it's come up a bit better now at my level can you see there and you can see that on the photograph if that is it now if it isn't it it's the drift that's between those two tips there well they're not tips either they're shafts actually See going round the corner, and there's a drift. You can follow the track as it comes out here onto the pit top. So, this is where the, the haulage road went round. 
Here you can see the shafts on the top. Another drift at the bottom. Another drift there beneath that shaft. And right at the top there, that's the shaft there you can see. But that heap there. So, so again, got to be careful I don't see what I want to see. But this looks like the older photo with the small tubs that I put down as a linger pit. Uh, again, I'm looking at the background. You've got the top of the drift here, you see? You see the men sat in the tubs and there's like a shed down here, isn't there? But certainly that skyline does look the same. So this is right up. pit top area here Be interesting to know what that was at the side of the drift wouldn't it and here we have got the crop edge coal just at the side of the the little drift you can just see it maybe a bit clearer just a smut, but it certainly is coal. I've picked a lump of coal out of it. You see? See the drift going in there. And I think this is the other shot where the guy's just starting to set the drift away. Uh, and it's the line of that hill and then that bit there. And it's the same when you see him and he's just about got the uh, got the portal in as well. And what it is as well, it's that little ridge there. You can say the hill comes down and then you've got that little ridge, although this here is different. Is more glitter glatter ends coming down the hill. Stairs are creaking and though the doers banging, feathers are waiting for her uncle Bill. Oh, no, I've got a shaft here, I didn't notice. Yeah, I only have the, the Clargill plan, not the, I mean the modern one. So there's obviously a fault between the drift at the bottom and this drift up here. And we've got this old shaft, as you can see. Or is it a fall? It does look like a shaft the way it's built up round it. He's filling his bottle with a waiter. More glitter clatter and rattle of a latch. Clubs in the lobby and talking quiet. So, we've got four here. We've got this one. That one there, next to the, the new drift, just pointed out. And that's a shaft there we've just looked at and it looks like there's one behind me also come on billy lads best get gooey clatter clitter clatter and from do a bang gooing down to mucky out coil pits here big shot in there debating clang glittering clattering coal or cavalry galloping rain or fine glittering clattering coal or Right, so these are the remains of the quarry. This is Linger Quarry. What's left of it? And if we just look opposite the road, there you've got the gate in. And the road up looks like it's going up to some more quarries. And there's Mount Hooley. So was there another pit like you were saying, um, Simon, that there's another pit there in uh, Mount Hooley? I don't have any records of it and it's going to be impossible nearly to tell because you can't get between the trees to see much but this is as close up to Mount Hooley as we're going to get so we'll see if there's anything else along here like I said there was a pit the other side of Mount Hooley which went under the name of Blagel Colliery and that was 1906 also the Nemp Force Lime Co well, I would say definitely all along this crop edge as you can see it's all been nibbled at and worked
I would say it's safe to say it's like this all the way across to Blagle, right through the plantation probably, because you can see on the, the other side of the plantation right across to Blagle, all the, the ways in, and it's a little bit like you see above Slaggerford and Nasdale, isn't it? You've got the quarry workings above there, aren't you, see? You're coming in. So yeah, all along the crop edge they've been in. But the Clargill site does appear to have been the well-established one in the field there. There, there we have the old Clargill pit, or maybe it is the Linger. Come down, and so the set was, a bit of a tramway to that, and we're in this field across the wall there, and that's where all these drifts are, there's a quarry up here, and that's the top of Linger quarry. I'm rightly or wrongly taking this stone to be the uh, little limestone stone. All goes quiet, sleep is coming. I wish I were a collier, it must be fun. You're nearly at Mount Hooley now. Um, again, these are all the coal drifts along here. Or uh, is there a fault coming here and now this is limestone working? See quite a bit of limestone in the side there, but this is the same elevation as the coal workings there. Now we're another drift onto the road, and that's a quarry access road there. Those trees are so dense, you're not really going to find much in there. And that's the gate that I came in, and up that track there, which takes you up to the little limestone quarry. But if we look here, so this is on the same line as a coal drift, but it looks like the limestone's come down here. But anyway, there's a track, which we can definitely see, running down through the gorse, here, down to the corner of Mount Hooley. And there's a little bit of a way in here. It looks like a coal drift just in there. There we are, the bottom of the track there, all covered in gorse. And you see, it looks like there's a way in there as well. So it's all very interesting. A lot more research needs to be done and field work. Glittering, clattering, cold old cavalry, galloping rain or fine. Glittering, clattering, cold old cavalry, galloping dented mine.